This is what's known as a press in insert. And with these little guys, you can level up your metalworking projects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can install these without the need of a super expensive industrial level press. Let's get started. The other week at my day job, I was tasked with an interesting problem. We have four conference room tables that can either go into a square configuration or all parallel into a long boardroom style. Now, instead of having a TV on the wall and everybody craning their neck to the side whenever they want to look at what the presenter is showing on the screen, we wanted to come up with a way to have monitors at each table so that at the most people would have to look only slightly to the side. The problem I was tasked with was to see if there was some hinge mechanism that could be made to store the monitors under the flush edge of the conference room tables so that they could all be butted up together to create a contiguous surface. And then when brought into the square pattern, flipped up for easy viewing. After a bunch of trial and error, I came up with this complex hinge design. One of the challenges of the design was the hinge mechanics. I wanted it to be tight and stiff, but still able to move. The solution I settled on was using these press fit inserts inserted in one of the components and then using the hole in the other to create the joint. That way, because the insert was rigidly attached to one of the sides, it decreased the tolerance slop by half by having only slop on the one single hole. Now I don't have access to a sheet metal fabrication shop, and so I was determined to find a way to press in these inserts without having to contract it out. Before we dive into the solution, let's take a quick look at what's happening when an insert is installed. The insert is placed into a precisely sized hole in the material it's going to be joined with. This is then supported underneath with a piece called an anvil. A punch capable of a large amount of force is brought down onto the insert, pressing the top flange into the mating material, which deforms into the grooves of the insert, locking it into place. The first step was to create the piece that was to serve as the anvil. I used a piece of thick walled tube steel and drilled a hole in the face that was just barely larger than the diameter of the insert I would be using. I then took it over to the disc sander and made sure that the top of the anvil was flat. Now previously I had looked up the data sheet from the manufacturer on these press in inserts and found that the force needed to press these into aluminum cut out by courtesy of Senkets, well I paid them, but Senketsend.com, check them out, great service. In order to press this insert into aluminum, I needed 2,400 pounds of force, so just over one ton. That's 10.7 kilonewtons for you metriconians. And a one ton Harbor Freight Arbor Press generates 2,000 pounds of force. And with a little bit of crossing my fingers and the assumption that this would not break if I pushed it a little bit beyond what it was specced at, and with the help of a cheater bar, I figured this would be able to generate enough force to seat this insert in a piece of aluminum. Let me show you how it works. I added two clamps on the back side as this had a tendency of rolling forward when pressing down. And just like that, the piece has been pressed permanently into the aluminum. Now, aluminum is kind of the best case scenario. I found that for 2,400 pounds of insertion force, a 1032 and smaller inside threaded standoff press in insert would be able to be done with a one ton Arbor press with a little bit of extra capacity added with a cheater bar. And the same holds true for metric sizes up to M5. Now, if you wanted to do the same thing, instead of aluminum into mild steel, the number is about double. So for a 1032, you'd need 4,000 pounds. So a two ton Arbor press. Now that's for the inside threaded standoff style. Now, if you wanted the male thread stud inserts, that also takes about double the insertion force. So about twice the force to put a male stud into aluminum. And then if you wanted to go into steel, it's about twice that. So a four ton Arbor press, which gets to be a little out of the realm of realistic, but if you set it up right with a probably a solid steel anvil, I believe it would be possible to press a male stud into mild steel with a hydraulic bottle jack press if you really needed to, probably up to the 1032 M5 thread size threshold. As always, I will have links to the data sheet, these studs, Arbor Press, everything here in the description below if you want to check those out. 
I hope this was helpful to some of you out there. Thanks for watching and joining in our pursuit of knowledge. Take care.